Ultros has just released on PC and PlayStation, so players like you will be digging into the game and experiencing what it has to offer for the first time. In my time playing the game for our review, which I've linked in the description below, I found myself having a better time once I understood the mechanics that were available to me. There's more depth to the game's unique gardening aspects than I first realised, so in this video, I'll be sharing three things I wish I knew before I started playing. In a game as focused on environmental storytelling as Ultros, working things out for yourself is important, so I'm going to avoid spoiling major discoveries for you. Number one, try feeding instead of fighting. In Ultros, like in any combat-focused game, killing enemies that get in your way is an important part of progression. Enemies will slow you down and also drop helpful edible body parts that are vital for improving your character as you play. However, opting for a more peaceful route by feeding enemies the things they like will actually help you more in the long run. This actually serves two functions. Not only will that enemy no longer be a threat to you during this specific journey through the game's time loop mechanic, but the next time you find yourself coming past this specific area, you'll find a brand new plot of soil waiting for you to plant and grow one of the game's 10 different seeds. Having a thriving, luscious garden is key to discovering everything that the sarcophagus has to offer, so giving yourself an early helping hand will save you frustration down the road. Number two, each plant is unique, so pay attention to their quirks. When planted, each of the 10 seeds I mentioned before grows into a unique tree, plant, or grass. These have different functions in gameplay, like acting as a platform to reach ledges just out of grasp, or growing a series of vines you can swing across. At the beginning of the game, you might plant what you need in the moment and move on to the next objective. However, as these plants grow and develop over the course of the game, you might start to notice some unique things about them. Each plant grows differently across the ground, wall or ceiling you plant them on. They burrow their roots differently and they flower differently depending on where these roots go. One plant might only flower as it grows around a corner, whereas another might only flower when it intersects with another branch or wall in its root system. You can use the digger modification of your extractor companion to check what's going on in the soil under a plant, and the track garden's cortex skill to see what you've planted and where you've planted it. Also, try dropping some compost on a patch of soil to see how the plant you've grown reacts to it. You might not think this is important at first, but it will give you a much easier time down the road. Which brings me to number three. Don't let your resources go to waste because future you will thank you. When you reach the end of an area, destroy one of the shaman's incubators and head back to the centre of a sarcophagus, you know that you're about to be stripped of your inventory, ready to start the game again in a new loop. This means you're likely carrying a bunch of seeds, fruits and enemy parts that will go to waste if you don't think ahead. Maybe now's the time to give future you a helping hand by feeding any enemies you come across on your route with the fruits or parts you don't need, or perhaps consider not picking up every piece of fruit you come across if you don't think it will benefit you right now, as it will take a loop or two to grow back. If you have the Green Thumbs Cortex skill unlocked, and I highly recommend using one of the mnemonic mycelium collectibles to pin it for the future, then why not drop your leftover parts in any soil you come across to give yourself some free compost on a future run? Or, spend any compost you've saved up in your inventory now to give your plants some fast action growth. So, if you follow these tips, then by the time you think you've reached the end of your time with Ultros, you'll have a luscious, verdant and varied garden that has spread itself all over the game's world, giving you a much easier time for what comes next. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, then please give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more video game podcasts, reviews and guides. I'll see you next time.